morning and welcome to a new day this very beautiful friday morning uh, i hope uh, i bet you're happy that we are stepping into the weekend because i am delighted as you can see from my dressing from the bright side so i'm very happy you know the week has come to an end but i hope that everything you set out to achieve this week you've been able to achieve if not all at least you know almost or more than half of it my name is chino Samani, welcoming you to this friday's edition of new day and of course i will do this all alone i have a new micro presenter anthony good morning yeah good morning i'm so lucky uh sitting close to the oh, finest lady I'm in the african continent i'm blushing <laughs> oh boy well you're sweet actually all Thank right nice you. to have you join us and we intend to actually make a day really really great and memorable and uh today is world youth day and so it means we are all in the mix Let's celebrate uh, youth all over the world, especially in Nigeria, because Nigerian youth have done excessively wonderful, right? Mm, yes, wonderful. Actually, yeah. it's tomorrow that the UN youth, label will yeah. start today so, yeah, let's start know, to commemorate it. And talking about Nigerian youth, you know, different times we've had arguments in the newsroom about if Nigerian youth are really, really ready to take up the mantle of leadership. Because we keep, I mean, people have been coming up with instances of youth that we see who are into, you know, different forms of social vices who are into drugs and all of that who are into violence and then we say are these youths really ready and my argument has always been like i mean we have youths who are capable when we say youth come and lead we don't mean anybody just because they're youth come and lead we're talking about youths who have things up there yeah, yeah. youths who are credible youths who have integrity youths who have things going for themselves intelligent people and definitely i believe we have them in nigeria so i don't think we should oh we should use those other you know, the negative uh, youth yes as to a yardstick judge, to judge yeah. because we have competent people who are really ready to take up the mantle of leadership in nigeria and then we can also be an instrument of peace to the nation yeah definitely regardless uh, the optimism that was given initially by the arua conservative uh, youth forum yeah. uh, we had other youth stand up and rebuke them and uh, like you rightly pointed out we've got youth doing excellence definitely. in different fields in the me uh, medicine in entrepreneurship <laughs> and uh, even in the media we have in every sector nigerians are blessed artistic uh you remember some months back particularly last year yeah. we were in nigerian youth in a Ghanaian university you know category 12 awards you know it just tells you how awesome and it was uh, and in, uh, in some universities across the world you hear this um, nigerian you know came out with this social degree the highest degree in social invention. school yes i mean different things that we do we are proud of ourselves so we shouldn't use the negativity as a yardstick yeah definitely and the 2017 uh, youth day uh, the same day building peace okay. uh, is what the nigerian youth have done so far and also we have to give them kudos for not too young to run uh okay. you know which has been pushed campaign still being pushed of by course. nigerian youth and uh, for the first time we're seeing something extremely positive uh the older generation are beginning to listen and believe that yes we've got youth that can actually get the job done and then come 2019 plus four more years on top of 2019 it's going to be excellent like a bit different, yeah we might just have a yeah. youth that's going to stun the world definitely so it's just all about every one of us having the positive mindset you know accepting change for what it is yeah. changing the change <laughs> like they would say <laughs> all right uh we've got to give uh serious concerns uh for me my concern stems from the medical field uh the fact that immunization national primary health care development agency have kick-started immunization uh to the uh campaign and we hope it succeeds uh because if you put into consideration the last fever the meningitis yeah. outbreak so you know that we need them yeah. immunization we need yeah. them to be proactive and uh, we hope that uh, the job gets well done of course and very key to know that in <coughs> so that day i was at a health facility and i attended their immunization you know exercise right, and yeah. different mothers brought their babies for immunization and i keep i was asking some mothers how how much they know about immunization and how it has helped their babies so far and some were very positive but then there's still some set of women some people some nursing mothers who do not know who don't have the knowledge they, they're still ignorant when it comes to immunization they don't know what this their children their babies tend to benefit from immunization so it's necessary for those mothers those nursing mothers who are aware of it to spread the word to those who are not aware of it because immunization vaccination can prevent a whole lot of diseases 
you know, outbreak and all of that. So those who are with spread the word, immunization is very key. Oh, for me, my key concern is um, the presidency saying, telling Nigerians that the, we try all, if we try all in its power to pass the 2018 budget to the National Assembly come October. October is just um, two, two months, months away. away. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we're having the 2018 budget being passed, you know, being worked on very early, early and all, so that we can start implementation early and all. So that it's going to be different from what we've had other years. Well, don't mind my mindset, but uh, I remember in 2015 or the 2017, we were promised. Uh, same thing was going to happen yeah. at the end. We didn't go as planned, but let's let's, hope let's be positive around, this time. Yeah. But another tricky part of me was just wondering: could it be the magic of 2019 uh, <laughs> that's making <laughs> the uh, federal government, you know, put all stuff together to ensure that uh, it comes early, so that the funds can be available to you know that's what 2019 looks thought. like? <laughs> <laughs> so you can never tell. You know, the elites they're yeah. too smart, so it has to do with anything that comes to politics. Uh, right. you know, so the whole different game. Well, okay. entirely. well, we'll be watching and uh, keeping our fingers crossed uh, as we uh, look forward to a better country, better leadership, governance, especially when the youth are concerned. We're still celebrating the World Youth Day, even though it's tomorrow, but we decided to start it today. Yeah. Um, before we kick start with the news for the day, you know how we do it, it's a key to line as a career for leadership clinic. And definitely, I'm sure we'll be saying something, one or two things for the youth this morning. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, we uh, have something in store for us to learn from. All right, we'll be right back with the news. Hello, great people of Nigeria. Welcome to the Leadership Clinic. Today, I'll be speaking about setting agenda for the new ministers. You know, it is interesting that finally the long-awaited ministers are already on board. And for a couple of days now, I've been thinking, really, how will these ministers really move to make things happen faster than they could ever imagine? And then I realized that in the first place, the ministers are coming on board in their various ministries. They are not going to meet fresh new civil servants. They are going to be meeting the same civil servants that had been in place. And so I began to wonder and ask myself a question that if nothing is really done and these people, the ministers just start working immediately, can they achieve the kind of results that is necessary. And I said to myself, no, it's a big no. It's a big no. The president started with a very interesting um, retreat. The aim of the retreat was to set an agenda for the ministers on the kind of um, you know, organization or structure or the kinds of goals that they want to accomplish, you know, as the case may be. And I realized that at the moment that it will be a great idea for any minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to resume work without, first of all, having a day or two retreat with the top management of their particular ministries and also with the DGs or chief executive officers of the parastatas under these ministries. This is very essential in the sense that it will not just be the usual briefing. In my own thinking, there will be this kind of retreat to provide an agenda setting for these ministers to really understand exactly who and who that they are working with. Away from that, they can set the vision, the big picture. They can, they, they can empower the people with the, the big picture, saying this is where we are going to. And as such, I allow everybody to buy, to have a buy-in, because I think that you know, if you have a consultative approach, you know, to uh, driving growth within these ministries, then results will be faster in the sense that, you know, we have a leadership retreat, you know, with these ministers in their various uh, ministries, with the top directors. And if that is really, really achieved, then there will be a sense of urgency that is being created. And thereafter that, I recommend an attitudinal change program 
and a paradigm shift trans program, you know, as the case may be, a program that will be geared towards ensuring that each person that is working in each ministry has the opportunity of you know listening to transformational context issues that can generate a sense of purpose within this civil servant each civil servant must think like a leader because the people of nigeria are waiting for results the people of nigeria are craving on how to get out of poverty the people of nigeria are craving on how to make things happen the young people of this country are actually looking for you know employment opportunities you know as the case may be therefore the enabling environment to make things happen must be created and for that to be created the ministers that are being appointed at this point in time who have started work must go into their ministries with first of all you know laying the foundation for a leadership culture within those ministries if that is done over a period of time i can tell you that you would have such a strong performance based ministries rather than what we have you know had before this is my sincere view on how these ministers can get running it will be leadership by example leadership with sound vision leadership with sound level of commitment and a great knowledge of the human capital that is available for these individuals to work with great people of nigeria this is my view but we must remember if a man doesn't have a purpose waking up sleeping becomes interesting Welcome back. It's now time to give you the trending stories, both on the home front and on the global scene. Let's kick start by telling that the federal government has expressed its commitment to submitting the 2018 budget to the National Assembly by October this year. Minister of Budget and National Plan Udo Udoma disclosed this at the end of the cabinet retreat held at the banquet hall of the presidential villa. The cabinet retreat is targeted at mapping out strategy on how to effectively link implementation of budget to the economic recovery and growth plan of the federal government. Speaking after the first session of the retreat, Minister of Budget and National Planning said preparatory work are in top gear to get the 2018 budget to the National Assembly by October. We are also looking at the budget. As you know, the um, MTEF, the Medium Term Expenditure Framework and Fiscal Strategy Paper was passed by the Federal Executive Council yesterday. Uh, this means that preparatory work, more detailed preparatory work for the 2018 budget is on. So this retreat, uh, members of cabinet as well as permanent secretaries and heads of agencies will be looking at the next steps uh, for the 2018 budget preparation. Uh, thank you very much. Uduma explained that the retreat is meant to ensure synergy among government officials in the process, ensuring a link between the budget and economic recovery and growth plan of the government. Spoke about the need to ensure full and faithful implementation of the economic recovery and growth plan because the government is committed to the transformation of Nigeria. The government is committed to bring the change that we promised. And this is part of that exercise. We brought together all the members of the cabinet as well as permanent secretaries and heads of agencies uh, to work out and to begin the process 
uh, of, uh, to continue the process of plan implementation. The Federal Executive Council has recently approved the medium-term expenditure framework to guide government spending from 2018 to 2020. As government officials continue to put heads together on preparation of the 2018 budget, getting the country out of economic recession, according to analysts, remains top on the wish list of Nigerians. Moving on, as part of its continuous effort of fulfilling the mandate of mitigating preventable diseases in the country, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency has begun a two-day national stakeholders disseminated meeting focusing on multi-indicator cluster survey and the national immunization coverage survey. The meeting, which began on Thursday, is expected to end on Friday in Abuja with a consensus building strategy targeted at improving immunization coverage in the country. The National Stakeholders Dissemination Meeting, organized by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, focuses on two agendas. They are the Multi-Indicator Cluster Survey, known as MIX, and the National Immunization Coverage Survey, known as NICS. Declaring the meeting open, NPHCD Executive Director Faisal Shwaib stated that his regime focuses on primary health care revitalization, strengthening routine, strengthening routine immunization, strengthening governance and accountability, and closing out on polio. Nigeria is currently the country with the highest number of unimmunized children in the world. We face many challenges with our PhD systems. The maternal and child mortality indicators are dismal. Although these challenges are systemic, I have no doubt that they are surmountable. Our gathering here today is part of the larger vision to collectively chart a new course towards boldly addressing the identified gap. This engagement must begin with a discussion of the results, recommendations, and an outlining of critical next steps to change the unacceptable situation. Participants at the workshop include state commissioners of health as well as state primary health care agencies. They are all expected to come up with a consensual strategy targeted at improving immunization coverage at the end of the meeting on Friday. Emmanuel Bagudu, PTV News. Meanwhile, the FCT branch chairman of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, Ekwe Phillips, said on Thursday that Nigeria is at the core of advancement in the 21st century medical revolution and citizens have little or no reason for medical tourism. Phillips, who is also the medical director of Inyanya General Hospital Abuja, expressed confidence that with the current anti-quackery drive by the NFA, the Nigeria's health sector will become one of the best in the world within a short period of time. We are all communicating. Most of us here, we go to the same conferences, we read the same books. We, you know, so Nigeria, the doctors currently are trying to bring back medicine. You understand what is happening even in the Western world and other places. Let us come to tandem. Yes, the economic situation is a big problem, but these things, like for instance, there are a lot of surgeries that goes on. There is no basically many surgeries that goes on in the U.S. Also goes on here in Abuja. There are some hospitals that you don't even need to refer the patient to, to, to the U.S. or U.K. IVF is very populated here. I mean, this is an advanced uh, medical practice. Things, uh, things like knee replacement, that advanced medical practice. Neurosurgery, advanced medical practice. Uh, um, you also have minimally invasive surgery, where you don't have to call the patient. It also happens here. You even have plastic surgery. And apart from that, we cannot just be talking about just high fallopian uh, medicine. We also talk about the primary health care, which the current minister of health is also empowering to see that and it looks like one of this country. In a bid to continue its drive towards ensuring high ethical standards in the medical profession, the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA Abuja branch, has reiterated its commitment to combating quackery in the medical profession. NMA Chairman FCT Branch Achongwa Chedizie stated this at the NMA Abuja branch annual general meeting and scientific conference on Thursday. These are physicians from different areas of specialties in the medical profession, united to fight a common front in the medical profession. They belong to the Abuja branch of the Nigeria Medical Association. It is their 2017 annual general meeting and scientific conference themed Medicine in the 21st Century, Minis, 
of Kwakri in FCT. According to Abuja branch NMA chairman, the theme was carefully and deliberately chosen to reflect the roles of advanced technology in medicine and sustained fight against Kwakri as well as enhance better health care services in the federal capital territory. All of you that are president and other people will guarantee improvement in the health of the citizen. We're also going to talk about medicine in the 21st century. And medicine in the 21st century has to do with high level technology. And our guest lecturer today will not want to frame him, but I'm sure he's going to tell us about all the new technological developments in terms of uh, uh, medical practice in the 21st century. The enemy did not deliberate alone. There was a presence of foreign medical practitioners who expressed readiness to partner and support the enemy anti quackery drive. We are look, uh, looking for collaborations with Nigerian counterpart hospitals so that uh, not only you know we can train their personnel, their doctors, but we're also looking to establish some sort of a relationship where we share knowledge. Apart from you know patient information, we share knowledge so that the doctors are better equipped with the cutting-edge technology, for example, functional MRIs, you know, computer-navigated uh, neurosurgeries and orthopedic surgeries, we want to share this knowledge with the Nigerian hospitals. The NMA also called for support from citizens, both home and abroad, to support the anti quackery drive by raising alarm of any questionable medical practices going on within their immediate environment. To mark the 2017 International Youth Day, the Nigerian youth have taken measures as well as means of ensuring efficiency and restoration of peace in the country. This they made known in an interview with PTV correspondent. Youths are known for their strength, fitness and agility. The International Youth Day is a day set aside to recognize the numerous contributions and relevance of youths in building a nation. And this year's theme is Youths Building Peace. To mark this year's commemoration, the Nigerian youths have taken time to criticize as well as appreciate the roles youths have played so far in the country. In our present times, those men then, they are still ruling us. It shouldn't be. What is the age of the youngest senator or the youngest president Nigeria produced in the last, from the 80s? Those people ruling us from independence, they are still the ones ruling us. I will say yes, I will say no. Why I will say yes is we still have some Nigerian youth that have taking the bull by its own and they are making it. They are surviving, whether there is government contribution or not. Whether government contribution is positive or not. They have survived. They are household name. Why we will have some that uh, they are just there expecting the government to do everything for them. They have no job. They can't find this, themselves doing anything and they, all they do is to blame the government. Pondering on the theme of this year's event, which emphasizes on the role of youths in peace building, they have called on their fellow youths to shun violence, crime, and uphold measures that promote peace. I think the, the Nigerian youth uh, still need to do more because the unity of these nations lies on how peaceful the youth themselves will conduct. The situation where some uh, people are instigating the disunity of the nation through the youth in now encouraging. They have also advised the government to provide adequate resources and measures that will make the youth to thrive. Let all things be in place. Good road network, electricity, employment, and all these things will be reduced. And a youth that is well employed will not go and look for crime. A youth that, we, that is well employed will not be a talk to a politician. Uh, in building peace in the country, you know, much of the crisis is led by the youth. If the government really empowers us, there will be peace in the country. Are you getting me? If they assist the youth, there will not be crisis because it's the youth that they are using to cause problems. It's the youth they are using to do one of all, the, all, all those things that is not right in the nation. So if they empower the youth, all those things will stop. 
However, it is expected that the celebration of the youth across the world will bring positive achievements and changes to Nigeria and the world at large. Valentine's on Thursday launched the BBC Television Act to the legislate of FCC. The event has in attendance different dignitaries ranging from politicians to village chiefs as well as diplomatic corps. Let's have It was the official launching of the Star Times Digital TV at Hulumi Village, a suburb of the Niger capital city, Abuja. In their addresses, these Chinese stakeholders who spoke on the importance of this technology talked through an interpreter. Which was enable every African family can access, afford, watch and share the beauty of digital life. First of all, in uh, Johannesburg, Chinese President Xi Jinping declared that we want to build, uh, provide satellite TV reception to over 10 Afri 10,000 African villages. In his contribution, Director General NTA, who is also the chairman of NTA Star TV Network, Yakubu Mohammed, talked about the partnership as well as the role the government is playing at bringing technology advancement to rural communities. In the first phase of this project, five villages will benefit from our initiative. Two of these villages are in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. Two are in Nasarawa State, and one is in Kwara State. It's working very hard to improve the lives of people living in rural areas. This is evidenced by the generous resources allocated to providing basic facilities and other amenities aimed at providing comfort and improving agricultural output in these areas. Part of the August event was donation of school materials to pupils of Hulumi Village Primary School by Star Times Group. In his words of appreciation, the Seriki Ingiwa of the community expressed gratitude for the kind gesture. That Nigeria and China are in a good mood, and we thank the Nigerian government and the government of China for their gesture by donating school materials to our children. The cutting of ribbons to signify the official launching was part of the occasion. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so we'll go. Okay. One, e two, R. three, seven. Please, a round of applause, a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The event was, however, ended with a culture display from the traditional dancers of the village. says it has ordered the removal of the names of 119 non-Nigerians from the country's voter registration as part of measures to clean up the register. The commission disclosed this in a statement issued by its director of voter education and publicity, Luwale Osaze Uzi, on Thursday in Abuja. The Nigerian Immigration Service recently retired several permanent voter cards and national identity cards from foreigners who were alleged to have registered as voters. And on to security matters, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Burutai, has decorated 65 soldiers with gallantry medals for outstanding performance in the counterinsurgency campaign. This was made known by the spokesperson of the 7th Division Nigerian Army, 
in a statement to Liz and Mante in Mexicali. Kingston noted that Barata had unfeasibly decorated two officers and 63 soldiers in recognition of their prowess. According to Kingsley, Barata has described soldiering as a call to national duty and tasks the soldiers to dedicate themselves to duty to weed out remnants of Boko Haram insurgents. It was noted that Burata also visited military formations at Awulari along Bama Road and inspected the test firing of an artillery weapon by 304 artillery regiment. And still on the Nigerian army, soldiers from 29 battalions of the 6th Division who had served in various units of the operation Lafia Doli in the Northeast have returned to their main unit in Port Harcourt. The Deputy Director of Army Public Relations, 6th Division, Amini Iliatu, announced this in a statement made available to newsmen on Thursday. Iliatu explained that the troops were returned to their unit in line with the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Chiku Burata's promise to re rotate soldiers who had overstayed in the Operation Lafiadoli. Lafiadoli is the operation precipitating the counterinsurgency and counterterrorism in the Northeast. Now, in as much as we should give um, uh, the Nigerian army kudos for the work done, yes, the work done so far. But let's hope that they really, whatever they say, it's what they're really doing. They're winning the war against insurgents. We don't expect it to just happen like you know, zoom. But then again, let's hope that they are going to take care of it as well. They tell us. Hopefully, uh, because uh, we had uh, several, like twice, locations where they passed uh, message uh, information to the public, which later they had to retrieve. Yeah. Uh, so it just tells you that they have to be uh, diligent in uh, doing whatever, and uh, they need the support of Nigerians, okay. especially yeah. the host communities, yeah. to pass to relevant information Definitely. to them so that they can actually win the war. Okay. You know, very quickly, let's move it over to the foreign, foreign thing. thing. Yeah. And the first I have here, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis has said America still hopes to solve the North Korea crisis using diplomacy. After days of fiery rhetoric from both the U.S. and North Korea, Mattis said war would be catastrophic and that diplomacy was gaining resolve. Pyongyang's authority announced it was finalizing a plan to fire four missiles near the U.S. territory of Guam. In, in as much... <laughs> In as much as the, the U.S. has threatened North Korea, yeah, it's, but they're still hoping to, you know, use diplomacy and talks to get this over with. But North Korea, like I said yesterday, they're not ready to back down. They prefer yeah. to exchange fire for fire. Well, but uh, let's see. A talk is cheap, they say. Let's see what's going to happen. We'll, we'll let's see who's going to be more lucky. If it's going to be the <laughs> Trump or the people from North, North Korea. Korea. All right. Let's tell you that the most genetically modified animals in existence have been created to help end a shortage of organs for transplants, says U.S. researchers. The, scientific, uh, the scientists successfully breed 37 pigs of vir viruses uh, hiding in their DNA, overcoming one of the big barriers to transplanting pig organs to people. The team at the Energy Army preventing pig uh, organs uh, from being rejected by the human body remains a huge challenge, but experts said it was promising and exciting first step. So moving over to Spain now, Spain may overtake Greece this year in numbers of migrants arriving clandestinely by sea, the International Organization for Migration says. So far in 2017, 8,365 85 people have reached the country by sea, more than triple the number seen at the same time in 2016. Greece has said Greece has had 11,713 people. All right, uh, next story uh, as regards CNN. CNN has parted company with the conservative commentator after he tweeted a Nazi salute at a prominent liberal critic. Jeffrey Lord tweeted saying here in response to an exchange with the head of Media Matters for America. He later said his comment had been misunderstood and that he was mocking fascists. The CNN spokesperson said in a statement that Nazi salutes are indefensible. Uh, Jeffrey Lord is no longer with the network. CNN described uh, Lord as one of the best known commentators and the first explicit pro uh, Trump commentator to join the network. 
And then moving over to some technology news, China's largest social media platforms, Weibo, WeChat, and Baidu Paper are under investigation for alleged violations of cybersecurity laws. The Office of Cyberspace Administration said the three platforms had failed to police content on their sites. It said people had been using the platforms to spread terrorism-related material, rumors, and obscenity. The breaches jeopardize national security, according to the administration. All right, taking you to Kenya. Let's tell you that Kenya's Electoral Commission has won the opposition that it claimed a victory for its presidential candidate, Raila Odinga, should be deemed illegal. The opposition has published its own figures, putting Odinga ahead of incumbent president, Uru Kenyatta. Uh, this contrast with provisional electronic uh, results giving Kenyatta a clear lead in Tuesday's poll. Electoral Commissioner Chairman Wafula uh, told the press that uh, it was the only body legally allowed to count votes. All right, the next uh, story we have here is coming from South America, South, uh, South Africa, sorry, South Africa's uh, Deputy Education Minister. Uh, has appeared in court on the charge of assaulting a woman in a nightclub. He was freed on $375 bill pending further investigation. The alleged assault caused outrage in South Africa with many people demanding to see her rights. Alright, and from Venezuela, let's tell you that Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has said he wants a face-to-face -face meeting with U.S. President Donald Trump. He told the newly elected Constituent Assembly that he wanted a personal conversation when the two leaders attended the UN General Assembly in New York next month. Trump recently imposed sac sanctions on Maduro, accusing him of undermining democracy. The White House has not yet responded to the comments. And as regards to U.S.-Cuba relations, Washington has expelled two Cuban diplomats after U.S. Embassy in Havana suffered mysterious physical symptoms, the U.S. Uh, State Department had said. It was not immediately clear what had happened with the spokeswoman, Peter North, saying there were no de definite answers about the source or cause. Reports suggest U.S. diplomats could have suffered hearing loss related to the use of cover sonic devices. And uh, finally, from Yemen, let's say that at least 19 migrants have died after being deliberately drowned. Drowned. The uh, UN's migration agency has said many of the drowned were thought to be teenagers originating from Somalia and Ethiopia. Hundreds of migrants were forced from a boat off the coast of Yemen for the second time in two days. A spokeswoman for the International Organization of Migration said the incident may be the start of a new trend. The UN say another 180 people were forced off a boat near the coast of Yemen on Thursday. That should be really sad. Very sad. It just shows you how inhuman some people persons can, can be. be. Yeah, according to the, the story, uh, we hear that probably he cited some people, some um, officials somewhere, and he had to, you know, they had to push the migrants off the boat to avoid arrest. Yes, to avoid arrest. Happen. It's different when we look at different factors that will make people want to leave their country. You you get to wonder, but then again, then again, that's really inhuman. Yeah, very very unfair. And uh, well, in the spirit of the Youth International Day, we just hope that uh, we might begin to see the reason for peace because uh, this theme for this year is building peace. Mm -hmm. And I think pushing fellow youth uh, into the sea is definitely not a sure way to build peace. Not at all. All right, uh, we'll be going for a quick break. When we come back today, we've got a very interesting conversation. We were looking at exploring talent, especially of the youth, as we celebrate uh, the International Day of the Youth globally. Bros, are they fine correct words? Huh? See the shop for that side. Mm. I see, I see, I see, I will look all that. Where be correct words? Uh, now the shop be down, now the next two. Peter, mm -hmm. see as people they pack, they go to the shop, go buy clothes. It don't reach like five days now. I just suspect eh, this Tunde way this is where eh, in Waka could carry Waka. See, mm. I go blow whistle. I go blow whistle because I'm going to go spray. Ah, whistle. Uh, come on, go and get the matter before you blow whistle. Whistle blast. Come on, come on. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, 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 come on, come on. 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 Come on, come on
Now I need you to start for this market. Mm -hmm. Why we say only your shop everywhere they come? I just want blow this so. Blow stuff. Mm -hmm. This is not be whistle blowing matter. Now empty and goodie bag. Would it be empty and goodie bag? With empty and goodie bag, if you carry your market enter another level, whether not for Facebook or for WhatsApp or for Twitter, for as low as twenty five naira. 25 naira. Yes. Or buy five what you like for 50 naira. That's our 131 hash to start. So with FDA goodie back, your business go pure. <laughs> My name is Ibrahim Sulemalgu. My name is Dr. Matthew Ashikeni. I am Dr. Muhammad Adamo Askiwa. My name is Comrade Tosin Adiaju. Keep watching. Keep on watching. Keep watching. The program New Day. New Day. New Day on people's television. People's TV. People's TV. PTV. Business is at its busiest, yet it's rush hour. Feel the pulse of the economy. Understand issues that plague the Nigeria economy. Join in the massive transformation happening in the Nigeria capital market. Be financial literate as I bring to you key players, the movers and shakers of the Nigeria economy. Flow with the narrative of how regulations and enforcement, corporate governance, innovative technology, 
investors' confidence and market institutions affect the economy. Be the first to feel the pulse of the market. On Mondays and Fridays, 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. is Gabriel Nisi. In celebration of the World Youth Day, uh, we decided to focus on the youth. And uh, we've got in the studio Adetoro Abdul Samir, who is the president of the Young Entrepreneurs of Nigeria, the Abuja chapter. Good morning, nice to have you join us. Thank you very much, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, uh, what would be your assessment of uh, Nigerian youth in terms of how they've been referring to sharpening their skills in entrepreneurship? Thank you very much. Uh, looking at it way back, in fact, uh, when you observe, youth are not too engaged in entrepreneurship. Okay. The reason is most of them want to have this white collar job, most of them want to work in nine to five, and this is why they are depending on government. But now, like what we do in Young Entrepreneur of Nigeria, part of what we want to do is to enlighten youth that we have to have this entrepreneurial revolution whereby everybody will think entrepreneurially. Let's go into entrepreneurship so that the dependence of youth on government will reduce. Mm. So I think by in the next few years, maybe two, three years, youth will begin to see entrepreneurship as an alternative to create wealth and it is happening already. Yeah. Okay, now talking about um, youth having that mindset of being entrepreneurs. I remember um, back then in school, we had a course was introduced yeah. on um, entrepreneurship. And it was basically, for me, I wouldn't say I learned anything <laughs> about how to be an entrepreneur from that course, but basically the theory, you know, aspect yeah. of it. And that didn't really, you know, think. Yes, it didn't mm -hmm. think. So where do you say we need to start from, you know, in, in, in making youth be, to be aware of this, you know, be trying to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Where do we start from? Do we start from the schools? How do we create that awareness in the youths? You see, the theoretical aspect in school to me is just to create a, a foundation okay. in knowledge, just okay. so you know that, yeah, entrepreneur is good. But it's to an extent, it doesn't give you the basic thing you need. When you're out of school, you need practical, practical aspect of yeah. it. Do you understand? Uh, like me, I have always in mind that I don't really want to work for anybody right from school. So, but when I got out of school, so it wasn't that easy. <laughs> it wasn't that easy. You know, okay. the, the system was found ourselves. It wasn't that easy. But for you to have that passion, do you understand? It's, it's a plus. So, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what they need to know about entrepreneurship is having that practical knowledge. That's mm -hmm. part of what young entrepreneurs of Nigeria is doing. Okay. You understand? We create trainees. Uh, we have training for them. Mm -hmm. We have uh, capacity building and 
and the rest. So with that, they will have this basic practical knowledge of entrepreneur and they, they already have their passion so they can actively choose based on their skills, choose wherever they want to belong and carry on from there for the entrepreneurship uh, whatever they want to bring themselves in. Looking at skills, just sorry. Looking okay. at skills, mm. you just talked about skills. Yeah. Uh, how do you get to identify what skill, what you know, one is good at? Because there's some people who they might be good at one, two, three, three things, okay. but they've not been identified. Okay, this is what I'm really, really good at, so that I can build on it. How do people really identify what they're good at? Okay, you, you said you said some people have like one, two, three skills. Yeah. yeah. What I do tell people because most people tell me I I I, I can do photography, I can do this, I can do that. The question I'll ask them, what is it that when you are doing, you are happy, you are happy about, even if you are not being paid? <laughs> if you can identify that, I bet you, if you go into that, the sky is your limit. Do you understand? Like me, I realize uh, each time I'm, uh, I love managing things. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I love managing people, I love coordinating projects and stuff like that. So when I realized that, I went into project management. Okay. I read. Uh, I went into certifications of project management. Okay. And <laughs> I'm a biochemistry graduate, yeah. and I find myself managing construction projects. Wow. And I'm doing very well in it. So that was just identify your passion. Identify what you can do best. That when you're doing it, you are happy. They give you money. They don't give you money. <laughs> when they wake you up, you can do it. As and have you identified yours? <laughs> well, uh, yes, I'm in the group already. <laughs> Okay, looking at the fact that uh, when you identify, most times there's this philosophy that say at times most things you have passion for mm -hmm. is not really necessary to get the money from. It could be some other things. Uh, when one is caught in that kind of web, what should be the best way forward? Well, like uh, the, the basic thing is passion. So when you're doing things, because even when you have passion for something, <laughs> definitely you need money. Yes, of course. And you can't be doing one thing for several years and you're not making <laughs> money. Money. You money. You have to pay bills. At the end of the day, your passion will start, <laughs> your passion will start saying, oh boy, this thing I'm doing. <laughs> so what we just do is to look around. Okay. There are several things around that are actually making money. Go for training. Okay. Now people are making a lot of money on the internet. Yes. Okay. You are a content writer. You are good at content writing. You can, look at, you can make money on the internet. So just look around, look at other things you know you can do that are trending yeah. out there. So you can venture into that. Now the, the me, I'll, I'll, I'll tell people, the major thing trending now is agriculture. Well, yeah, at least I, I, they are yet to see that. They are still yet to, you know, yes, fathom how they can go around fact, They don't I, see that I, something attractive. <laughs> in fact, I have a lot of young members now that are venturing into agriculture. Wow. In fact, the Kobe State young member, very soon, we'll be launching a, a, a youth rice, uh, a rice initiative project. It will be launched in Abuja, and uh, you, you notice that people are actually going into it. Mm, Things so are happening, yeah. but some youth have not seen it. Mm. So just look around. If your passion is not working, look around. Okay, what says am I good at that? It's trending. Mm. Do you understand? Then you can venture into that. Okay, uh, being uh, the president in Abuja, Let's focus on the FPPs. Uh, what have you, you know, identified as the biggest problem facing the youth in the FPPs? And uh, what is your recommendations as solution? Okay. The first thing I identified is lack of information. Okay. Most of them are on the internet, but they're not checking for that information. Yeah. Okay. You see somebody on Facebook 247 chatting, likes, shares, and the rest. So there are other informations on this social media that you can actually harness. So lack of information is the first thing. So don't search for the right information. That's one. Then secondly, they believe that every uh, whatever you want to do, you must have this capital. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Young entrepreneur of Nigeria is na nationally is just about two years old now. Okay. And if you want to look at our achievements in that two years, some organizations have not achieved it in ten years. Yes, I can categorically tell you because we have now there will be a summit we are about to do. It's not as if we have one million of naira in any account, but the budget is one forty million naira, and things are already happening. Do you understand? So I want to tell you to don't don't have this mentality that you must have huge amount of money in your bank account before you start anything. 
It doesn't okay. work that way. Just make sure you believe. Be creative. Be creative. When you are creative, you don't need to search for money. People will search after your business. Do you understand? Just be creative. Think out of the box. So those are the things I want you, especially in SEC, to realize. And the sky, your business will boom. Just be creative. Do something that nobody has done before. Something crazy. And how, would you, how, how would you say the government's policies um, have you know, made it really difficult for you to excel, regardless of all you've just said? Well, are there other the challenges that are really facing that you would? Yeah, p people keep saying uh, the reason why entrepreneurship is not thriving in Nigeria is because uh, government policy are not friendly, and to an extent, it should be, it should be part, it should be part of it. But you don't totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. To an extent, I don't totally agree with that. Though the, the there is supposed to be some other flexible uh, policies, policies yeah. okay. for SMEs and the rest <coughs> to, yeah. to thrive, which I'm very sure this uh, present government are actually working on. The other time I was reading on daily, and uh, the vice president uh, Romeo Tumande was saying uh, the budget seven seven trillion naira budget central budget is not even enough to cater for uh, what we need in Nigeria. So he's even looking at entrepreneurship as an alternative mm -hmm. to help the government to, to help the government to help entrepreneurs. So they, do they need to be, be flexible in their policy anyway. But even at that, you as an entrepreneur, there are other policies you can have. Look at the, poli the, the BOI, they are soft loans. Okay. You can actually address in BOI. As I've said earlier, lack of information is what makes you to just sit back and think yeah. things, things are not no happening. happening. There, are, there, are, there are policies. Look at the past government, there's a uh, win and the rest. There are other things you can actually analyze that will okay. help them to. Now, talking about lack of information, what have you done in your capacity as an organization okay. to ensure that you truly get the proper information? How far has your reach been in Nigeria as a whole? Because we need to make the use aware of mm -hmm. so much different information in the orientation. Side. How far have you gone in that? Okay. The most powerful means of spreading information now is social media. Yeah. Even social media is has even compete. Is co they are competing with uh, TV, radio, and the rest yeah. in spreading information. Some people don't even spend money. People don't spend money on advert anymore. They just go on yeah. social media. So it is that tool they are using. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, there was this uh, event we did. We did in Lagos, Yahweh. That's a, a youth and a woman empowerment uh, uh, program. It's within one month. No jingle, nothing. It was just social media, and we have over 2,500 uh, 2, delegates that participated. So you can see how powerful social media is. So that's what we've been using. And so far, so good. We've been using Facebook, Instagram, and there to reach out for, uh, reach, reach out to other enter young mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. And people are actually coming now. We have almost 50,000 youth that have signed up as uh, young entrepreneurs because we, we have it in almost the, uh, all the 36 states okay. of the country. Okay. You understand? So. All right. Uh, we, we know that this 2017 uh, uh, International Youth Day is mm -hmm. titled A Golden Seed. What role would you say you've been playing in order to ensure peace within Nigeria? We know the ultimatum that was given somewhere along the line yeah. by uh, Northern Youth, mm -hmm. and uh, we had counter ultimatum from different parts of the yeah. country. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot be a successful entrepreneur when there's no, no peace. peace exactly. So, what is your own contribution towards ensuring building peace in Nigeria? Okay. Uh, as part of the program, we have, we have, we have, there is this community development program we have under our structure in uh, Young Entrepreneurs in Nigeria. So under that, we always go for community development uh, programs to educate people about peace. Peacemaking, no conflict. We also educate our youth to also erase this mindset of uh, political toxicity, which most of the politicians intend to, it, it is really you that they yeah, intend to use or yeah. use of it. So we have a lined up uh, uh, assessment to assess what is it, what makes our youth to actually want to go into that okay. and also address that issue that no, you don't have to do that. What did you find out yeah. in, in your assessment? Yeah. Uh, probably most people would say uh, uh, the, the, the government are not taking care of the youth, so people that want to take care of them, they will do whatever they want them to do. Because you know they give them peanuts, mm -hmm. and okay. you know poverty have really done a lot to, yeah. to us. So they be uh, if I get this, then whatever I want to do, I'll, I'll do it. Do you understand? So that's majorly that's most of the people who actually assess. That's what they will say. Mm -hmm. 
You, you understand? Like that was what they would say that uh, if this person can give me ten thousand naira, I would I'll just go and scatter this and I'll do it. You understand? So that is you know we'll be able to assess that and we'll be able to also say no, it doesn't work that way. If you have something you are doing, nobody how much is ten thousand naira? If you have yeah. something you're doing, nobody will offer you something to do this okay. and do it. You understand? So we'll be able to do that and so far so good. You have know? you been focusing on the northern region where it seems the youth there are more uh susceptible to this kind of influence? Yeah, we, we, we have, as I've told you, we have here in the normal area. Uh, 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 what state specifically in the north have you we've been working? We, we, we've worked in Kaduna. Okay. We've worked in Kaduna. We've worked in um, Yola. Okay. Yeah, we've worked in Yola. In fact, even uh, the national summit we'll be doing, we deliberately have the summit for the no, uh, north. The north central is in Abuja mm-hmm. because we zoned it. And the north west and north east will be in uh, Yola and uh, Kaduna. So it's, it's basically for us to engage the youth of those places so that they can be enlightened and they will not be used for all these uh, evil uh, state devices. Okay. okay. So what would be your message to, to youth like as regards um, entrepreneurship? Because I really want us to think, you know, you mentioned something about mm-hmm. agriculture earlier. Yeah. How do you, you know, say one can, the youth can go ahead? And then we talked about <coughs> you don't need so much capital to actually start up something. Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the smallest amount of money you can use to start up anything? I just want to give us an insight so that for the youth who are listening can just have mm-hmm. a little insight into what you're talking about. Thank you very much. You see, there is no specific amount of money that you need to, even you can have zero naira and start something. For whom we want to, how would you have zero naira and start up something? Thank you very much. It's the idea, when you have idea, you're cutting it. Okay. And by the time you have that idea, you've gotten it. Now look at someone. There is there is this thing going on now. Uh, I, I I don't know. I've, I've forgotten the their website. What they do? Do you understand? They talk to people. Mm-hmm. You have this money. You don't even know what to invest in. I come to you. I talk to you. That okay. I have this platform. Okay. I want to loan money to people. Okay. And they pay interest. Okay. You don't have the money. You have the idea. Do you understand? Okay, when you look at that, okay, they'll pay interest. How many, how many percent interest? Okay, maybe five percent. I take you, take you. Do you understand? It's going on right now. People, are, in fact, you just press your phone and want a loan of ten thousand naira and credit your account. BBN will help them get it back. Okay. Do you okay. understand? So it's it's going on. You have the idea. I come to you, you invest your money. I come to you, invest your money. Go to other pl- other people that want to invest their money. They inv- you don't have one naira, but so you have this idea. Having the idea. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And from there, you start making money. Yeah. And there are lots of several ideas like that if, that people are not investing. They, they, you yeah. know, they sit back at home and press this <laughs> thing <laughs> and are not making use of it. Do you understand? So there are lots of ideas there. Okay. Where people can actually make money from. My final question will be um, on talent. Uh, okay. w- we know that you might have the talent, but because of uh, poverty, lack of exposure, support, yeah. you might not be able to showcase your talent and be helped out. Yeah. How can the youth? Uh, you know, those that have m- awesome talent and do not have people to help them out, push it forward. How would you support? What would yeah. be your advice? Yeah, in and fact, does Yen play any role? Very good. In fact, Yen, we are concerned about the grassroots talent. Okay. There are people in the grassroots. There, are, there are youth that are there in the grassroots that doesn't even have the opportunity to come to town like Abuja and mm-hmm. people like us. Yeah. So we reach out to them. Okay. We reach out to them. We call them aspiring entrepreneurs because this entire this this uh, organization is not meant for only the successful entrepreneurs. Okay. We bring the ent- aspiring entrepreneurs, even those that are in school that are saying, "Okay, when I when when I'm out, I want to be an entrepreneur." Yeah. We bring them in as well. So we we reach out to those grassroots people. What talent do you have? What do you think you are good at? Okay, you you are good at you are you are good in painting. You you are good in bricklaying. You are what what are you that? Then we we'll bring them on board. There is this thing we call. Uh, uh, we don't. We don't take our business out. We need. Uh, we need a tailor. We need a, a fashion designer. We have fashion designer in Yemen. Yeah. We recommend you. Wow. Do you understand? Because we are, we reach out. We know we can do it. So we recommend even from the grass. We see you doing things to people that are in town. From there, we join people in town. So we we have a program that will reach the grassroots members. All right. Uh, I think. Uh, what would be your final message to youth uh, as we wrap up? Yeah, my final message is simple. It's just uh, uh, I, I want all you to come on board. There is an entrepreneurial revolution. Okay. We want to take over with entrepreneurs. Let's forget white collar job. Let's yeah. forget uh, nine to five. 
I'm not saying everybody can be an, an, an entrepreneur, yeah. but if you're passionate, if your passion is entrepreneurship, you're welcome on board. We welcome you, young entrepreneurs in Nigeria, and we are moving. Thank you very much. All right, so I want to say a big thank you to Adetoro Abdul Samiu, who is the president of the Young uh, Entrepreneurs of Nigeria, the Abuja chapter, for coming to share uh, the good news for uh, the youth in Nigeria as we look forward to building a very peaceful society and nation in total. We'll be going for a quick break and when we come back we'll be talking more on tapping talent or exploring talent and also as we celebrate the World Youth Day that is officially tomorrow. Bros, are they fine correct words? Huh? See the shop for that side. Mm. I see, I see, I see, I will record that. Where be correct words? Uh, now the shop be down, now the next one. Peter, mm -hmm. see as people they pack, they go to the shop, go buy shop. It's only like five days now. I got suspect eh, this Tunde way, this is where in Waka could be carrying Waka. See, I go blow whistle. I go blow whistle because I'm going to go spoil. Ah, whistle. Uh, come on, God, my the master, before you blow whistle. Whistle blow. Come on, God. Uh, uh, thank uh, you for coming. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so, so. Oh. Now only you get sacrifice for this market. Uh -huh. Why we say only your shop everybody will come? I do before blow whistle. I go blow some. This is not the whistle blowing in my now, empty and goodie bag. Would it be empty and goodie bag? With empty and goodie bag, if you carry your market, enter another level, whether not for Facebook or for WhatsApp or for Twitter, for as low as 25 naira. 25 naira? Yes. Or buy five, what you like, for 50 naira. That's a 131 hash to start. So, with empty and goodie bag, your business go pure. <laughs> My name is Ibrahim Sulemaldi. My name is Dr. Matthew Ashikeni. I am Dr. Muhammad Adamo Askiran. My name is Komoto Senadiaju. Keep watching. Keep on watching. Keep watching. The program New Day. New Day. New Day on People's Television. People's TV. People's TV. So you're still watching Africa's finest fresh back show New Day on Channel 130 People's Television and Star Time Chipoda. My name remains mm -hmm. Anthony Momodi and uh, still got uh, my co-presenter here with me, Dr. Madi. And uh, let's make welcome our guest in the studio in the person of Lugar Okonobo, the country director of STV Project Nigeria. That STV stands for Students Teacher Volunteer. Project Nigeria. Good morning, Lugard. Nice to have you join us. Good morning, Good morning. morning. All right. Uh, looking at uh, we're looking at exploring uh, talent, uh, basically talent of youth. 
Als die Wortschüssel in Wirklichkeit ein Ohr die Jungs sind, wie sie sich etwas nicht mehr machen, was sie in der Gespräch sind, hat ihn gedreht. Uh, how would you say your students who travel and share on our project uh, has also helped them you know, tackling challenge and facing them? Do you have volunteer and why volunteer? Yeah. Is that just a, a smart way of getting the kit label? Uh, well, they're just trying to be creative. Yeah, the concept of volunteerism has long been in existence. Okay. It's just that in Nigeria today, we do not really uh, have a policy framework that drives volunteerism. Presently, issues of volunteerism is domiciled in the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. They're coordinated by NNPA, the Nigerian National Volunteer Service. Okay. okay. Now, back to STV project. STV project focuses on students, teachers, who are from the colleges of education, okay. requesting them to volunteer. Now, volunteerism is not because of cheap labor. Okay. But we noticed that right now, even the former president of our project said Nigeria is sitting on a time bomb because of the volume of youths that are unemployed. And every day the number is growing geometrically, mm -hmm. if not more than geometrically, if we are to use another grammar. So we felt that we have to teach people the need to volunteer. Nigerian today, you have young people who are not ready to volunteer. Everybody wants to be MD, CEO, <laughs> chairman, and all that. So you have to tell people that, look, there is a learning process. Yeah. I graduated in 99, but I came into presidency as a volunteer 12 years after. Because I needed to learn the process of governance. Mm. But today you have young people who want to go into politics without getting the knowledge yeah. of governance. Yeah. There's no experience. So volunteerism creates a pathway for you to have an experience. Now, mm. as a young person, if you are talented, no matter the talent you have, if you don't have the experience, sincerely speaking, your talent will either be wasted or it will be abused or you will use it wrongly. So Student Teacher Volunteer Project aims at announcing the potentials of young people, encouraging them to volunteer, advocate for them to volunteer. That way, their skills will be known, their talent will be exposed, and every other opportunity will come their way. Okay, and uh, from someone who is engaged with the youth, what can we say are the biggest challenges of the youth today in Nigeria? The biggest challenge of the youth in Nigeria today uh, is arises from different areas. Okay. Now, from the office I worked in the last government, and even this present government, office of SSA to the president, or youth as student, as I wish you all know, uh, I saw a lot of things. One, policy framework, very poor. The system does not have a design plan to take care of the young people. Okay. Now, what do I mean? You have a young person who is talented. Somebody comes and says he's doing empowerment. You give them 100,000 or 300,000. 100,000 for what? To rent an office or to rent a house. So the cost of doing business is very expensive. Okay. So even young people who have been trained, who have got training on their own, mm -hmm. they find it difficult to establish a business of their own. So policy framework is not there and you find out that at the state level a lot of things have been done faster than this but again the youth has a huge volume of opportunity because the un recognizes the youth and in all the member countries of the united nations okay. the issues of youth have been domesticated okay now where the problem lies is implementation yeah. there are lots of policy framework a lot of youth are doing fantastically well in different areas. But a system that will announce the potential is not there. Mm -hmm. Take for instance, go to UTC. You see young people who are willing to work mm -hmm. with their laptops on their lap, they work, they do design, they are making money. But in this same place, you find out that one of their biggest challenges is power. Okay. Now the question you ask, what is AMAC? The Abuja Municipal Area Council, what are they even doing to yeah. provide steady power so to keep these people busy mm -hmm, yeah. so that they can engage a lot of youth? More, if I'm not making a mistake, not less than 5,000 people are working in that UTC. Mm -hmm. So imagine if there is constant power, the number will increase. 
and you check the multiplier effect, each of those persons may be sending money to one or two, three persons somewhere else. Okay. And so the issue of peace will definitely come. Because if you look at the UND, it says youth building peace. Yes. If you have a talent and you don't have the capacity and the, the environment to announce it, sincerely speaking, that society will not build peace. Even you as an individual, you will not have peace. So more of talking of giving the society peace, which will not be there. All right. Um, can you give us uh, some very strong advantages of going into volunteerism as a way of uh, exploring your talents, getting experience, and getting placement, getting a network as a, co a contact? Yes. I. While you were talking, something just dropped in my mind. Okay. I could remember uh, three years ago, a young lady came to me in the church and said, Sir, please, I want to pay for IT, industrial attachment. I said, where do you live? She told me, Maraba area. I said, well, you know, most times now, they don't even accept industrial attachment. Okay. That could tell you the level of unemployment in the society. Yeah. Somebody says, I want a place for IT. The organization will say they are not going to pay. And still we say there is no space. <laughs> <laughs> so, and from there I started thinking, I said, okay, why not change your style? In a way to say, sir, I want to volunteer. Well, yeah. <laughs> and the old, it, it, it gave an opportunity for wow. the young lady. Yeah, now, I asked the young lady, you read Mascom? She said, yes. I said, I will link you with a media house. I said, but before I link you, I know that they want somebody who will be good in operating camera. Yeah. Okay. So first and foremost, in the church, yes, Learn. volunteer as a camera person yeah. in the media yeah. section. Okay. And she did that for three months. Wow. And within a space of three months, she started knowing how to handle the camera yeah. free of charge. And for me, I think I should use the forum to also advocate for young people. Okay. In the church, which is one of the main area where you have a lot of opportunity that you can volunteer. Volunteer in one area. Now, she already knows the skill of mass communication by virtue of the profession she has chosen. Now, after three months, I took her to on TV. Okay. Okay. She started with on TV without pay, but because she could handle the camera, so there was a space for her. So for me, I don't believe that there's anything like unemployment. Unemployment is there as a, a will I say, as a grammar. Maybe you want to say unemployment. Yes, there's <laughs> unemployment. But to you as an individual, wake up to the responsibility to volunteer. Because when you volunteer, you see opportunity where your skill will be explored. Your talent, you develop your talent. So no matter the volume of talent you have, if you don't have access to volunteer, at the end of the day, you find out that you just be there wasting away. So for young people, I will always advise, get somewhere to volunteer. I Till tomorrow, I still tell people, um, it, I think some young people will say volunteer general. Yes, <laughs> because through volunteerism, I've okay, made contacts. That sounds okay. nice. <laughs> I volunteered in the presidency, and that gave me a, a lot of access to contacts. Okay. So today, some person can just come say, please, look, I we need so, so, so contacts. Yes. So I tell people, don't envy my person. <laughs> if you see my profile, don't envy it. You need to ask me, how, how did, did I get here? Yes. So as a young, talented person, if you want to get to where you want to get to, decide to volunteer. Even in people's TV today, a young person can choose to come and volunteer. No pain. Because, <laughs> yeah, they, see, you see, the issue is that at the beginning, there may not be pay. And I want to say here, every person employed in, in an organization is a liability. Okay. When you have a, I have a company today. When you have a company, like in this place here, somebody bought this. Okay. Because it needed to run this organization. Yeah. Okay. Money is spent to buy this. The space we are sitting costs money. Okay. And you all know, anywhere you want to rent an office, they say per square meter. So we are sitting on some square meters, <laughs> which you have to pay, pay for. for. Yes. You have to provide lighting. If the light goes off, you have to own generator. Yes. So every person employed is a liability until you prove yourself otherwise. You cannot be an asset to that organization. So you should understand that most times, people who have opportunity to employ are afraid because they want people that will add value. Okay. So if you can add value, there's opportunity. 
And one way for you to add value is for you to volunteer. Okay. It still boils down to vo- so volunteer. So, if I right? volunteer today to be a cleaner, I mean, just be assisting you. First and foremost, I've gained entrance into people's studio. Yeah. You can't hijack an airplane from outside. <laughs> you have to be inside. I like that because so, I hijacked yes. the plane from the outside. And that's why you're surprised that somebody who went in to be a story, we, I mean, entered the plane through the other side. <laughs> At the end of the day, he's being celebrated. He took a risk. <laughs> but don't forget, he landed the same time the airplane landed, landed in Lagos. <laughs> That is success. So, but I am not supporting such thing. <laughs> but however, don't forget that even if they say there is no space and mm-hmm. the person chooses to stand for the five minutes of his five minutes from Benin to Lagos, the person is already in Lagos. And the same time, they welcome all of them when they come out. But the most important thing for you to know is that first and foremost, choose the opportunity to see how you enter into an organization. Yeah. That way, you have access to the people that comes around. Okay, now let's let's tie all of this discussion to the theme of the World Youth Day. Can you just help us throw more light and make us tie all of this around it? Yes. We're talking about exploring talent. talent yeah. yes. And we're also talking about the, the International World Youth, Youth, Youth Day, Day yeah. which is marked every August 12th, a yeah. day set aside by the United Nations to recognize the efforts of young people, people yes. to see that young people are celebrated, to see that the stakes for governance, for politics, for entrepreneurship, for gender, in short, youth in general, is uh, is welcome. It's also a day set aside for youth mainstreaming. Because when I, if you take an overview of the youth uh, demographic in Nigeria, you find out that we have the largest population, about seventy percent. It's a deciding factor, factor in several, yeah. in several uh, areas. And youth is also highly interministerial. Okay. But I will tell you today... When you say interministerial... Interministerial. <laughs> now, if you look at the Ministry of Youth, it's one of the least funded ministry mm-hmm. in Nigeria today. Okay. Does that give us a clue to how much the government appreciates the mm-hmm. role of the youth? Yes. Very, very. But again, don't you'll be surprised that youth ministry intertwined with the Federal Ministry of Finance, Youth Ministry intertwined with the Ministry of Co- and Culture, Youth Ministry intertwined with INEC, the Ministry of Interior and all that. Mm-hmm. So youth ministry, youth itself is highly interministerial. Okay. That's why we talk of young people in governance. The election monetary, those that will register, the INEC, the voters, the, they are all young people. If you check the volume of people that work in the electoral process, they are young people. If you talk of power, we have young people. Those that do the good, the bad, the ugly, they are the youth. So that is why the UN recognized the, uh, the, the theme for tomorrow, which is the International Youth Day, says youth building peace. Because they have, the youth form a huge number of demographic, not just in Nigeria, but globally. So if you want to have peace, then this demographic volume that controls a youth percentage should be well taken care of, should be given access to help their view and all that, should be given opportunity for them to explore their talents, like, like what we are talking here, yeah. to see that their talent is well honest. Or else, if their talent is not well honest, what will happen? It will be used in a negative way. So don't be surprised that you see young people who are very good in ICT. Instead of the government to think of how would they announce the potential of these young people, you leave them. So what did they do? They go into uh-huh. cybercrime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They go into yahoo yahoo. They go into hacking. Yeah. And that's why they tell you, is it your money? I carry. It's not your money. <laughs> that they are doing. I mean, they're legitimate. And don't be speak. abroad. Hacking is a cost of its own that people mm. pay for. Yeah. So we have. Young people who are well talented. But they use it for the it wrong takes, purpose. Yeah, they use it for the wrong purpose. Why? Because they've not been developed for the good purpose they were meant for. So. All right. Uh, for the Nigerian youth, especially those in the rural areas and those in uh, certain parts of the country that seem uh, not exposed to reality as regards to the importance of unity. What would you advise 
in means of changing their mindset. So I think Chinese are another unit that seems to always uh, spoil for war. I think that's competition with other uh, regions of the country. Yeah. I will sincerely not agree with you, the Northern youth. Because one, with the ultimatum, we have. Yes, if you look now, the ultimatum is taking almost a different shape. Yesterday, we have a coalition of uh, agitators from Niger that are saying that the Eurobars and the and the Eurobars and Ausa should vacate the Niger Delta area. And two weeks or three weeks ago, we had those from the Odwa saying that. But someone kick started this. Yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. So see, it's, it's that region. You see, because recently we also heard that there was a song placed on the internet. Uh, where a house staff kicking a lady did feel instigated song against the Igbos. Those, those are very key. They are very key, but I will tell you this. This brought us back again to the issue. We are talking of youth building peace. If you look yeah. in the whole process, the people that are being used in this are youth. Yeah, obviously. And it's a function of poverty. And One ignorance. way, yes, I will tell you this. Sincerely speaking, by virtue of working, Sometimes when we go out for an event and you find out that, ah, man, the place will be very tough, we we'll just tell Oga, one way to scatter this thing is just to drop money somewhere so that you run away. And I will tell you, it's sincere. When you drop the money there, everybody drives towards that direction. So if you want to pass through the back door, or all you just need to do is drop the money at the front. <laughs> and the old people from the back come to the front, and you have your exit way out of the system. Mm. So in a way, what I'm talking about is that Nigeria is a very complex uh, society. I sat down with some young people and we came up with say, how do we address this issue? In trying to solve an issue, another issue comes up. So politically, some activities that you see the youth that are being used for is also being involved. So sometimes I would not just agree that these are youth that just woke up. Somebody is financing them. Yes. You saw what happened in Kaduna State. Yes. You know what it means to pay the press. To come at a press conference. If you look at those, where are they working? Who gave them money? These are things that should be investigated. Now, the Odwa also had their own. Look at the, level, the number of cameras that came to cover the event. They paid for the venue. It costs money. They mobilize people. People pay transport. So, money, politics are all going hand in hand with respect to this issue. But on the, on the issue of the state not an act, I would just want to say Northern that youth. the Northern Youth, yeah. Yeah. the Northern yeah. Youth. Now, somebody must start something. And it has to start from the Are you getting my point? Region. Somebody must start something. So maybe I would say they have the boldness, or maybe they are the first. They were the first people to have the money, and at the end of the day, they should start. Let's see, see ignorance as a key factor. Ignorance, the level of education, the level of enlightenment, the level of exposure. A lot of things interplay in that. But I am not supporting that. I'm not in support of such agitation. Yeah, but what would you recommend as the best way to change the mindset of the youth in that region? Yes. First and foremost, they need the enlightenment. Okay. They need to be well educated to understand the project called Nigeria. Okay. To understand that there is Nigeria is a country that is left. But you see, how can you? There are certain things you will not understand when you are hungry. There are certain things that even if you understand, <laughs> for the fact that money comes, your understanding will naturally die. <laughs> yes. Have you seen a man who has been hungry and suddenly money comes? The man starts misbehaving. <laughs> so that is a situation. So a lot, just as I said, a lot of things interplay in this matter. But it's very unfortunate that they allow themselves to be given that, I mean, to raise such to agitation. Yeah. Yes, of course. Because I, 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 I had the opportunity to speak to some young people. I said, this, I wish these people know the implication of what they meant. Mm -hmm. A little statement that is made here that goes viral on the social media can cause a lot of investors not to come. You give people 90 days of mentor. And so, what it means that the international community will sit and begin to watch what may what happen. Here. And in the process of watching what will happen before October 1st, the Niger Delta guys came out yesterday and said they are giving October 1st as a deadline for every other people to vacate. So, they are now watching again what is going to happen. 
So even if there are MOUs that have been signed with state government or federal government or any other institution, a lot of things will just get on hold. Yeah. And so what happens? And as you see the situation today in Nigeria, most country, most of our states are highly indebted. They can't pay salary. And so at the state level, there is hunger. At the federal level, yes, you may say we are selling crude oil, but then at what level are we having investment? We are paying a lot of debt. Look at the budget for this year. Almost 30 or 40 percent going for debt services. So we are not having a sustainable economy. More also, I mean, maybe the UN just saw it that Nigeria is having a very uh, complex situation. They have to choose a topic that the youth is giving peace. <laughs> but we actually need peace to survive the we situation that do. we have right now. Okay, so talking about youth, um, let's look at um, from your standpoint and from your wealth of experience as regards you know, these things, would you say that Nigerian youth are actually ready to take up that mantle of leadership? Talking about the lottery of Gerondi that Jamie talked about. From your Thoughts. Nigerian youth are not ready. Why do you say so? I said they are not ready because, you see, leadership, before you assume a position of leadership, you have to be prepared. The question you want, you will ask is that, to what extent are our youth prepared for leadership? You see, the other day, well, if you consider yeah. that even yeah. those that have led us in the past, yes, they've not done any better. So, the youth will tell you, if those people that seem to have been prepared for a thousand years yeah. still I cannot still deliver, achieving, yeah. it, it, do they need to go through any extraordinary kind of preparation? Now, preparation. I'm talking of here is that a situation be relative, I guess. Yes, of course, because you see. Yes, you get a lot of training, go for seminar, go to school, good. But psychological preparation, healthy care preparation is not there. And you think you don't have any youth? You can't we, have, we have youth. But generally, I will tell you, few of the youth who have assumed positions, mm -hmm. they get there, they even disappoint the, their fellow youth. You have an example. I have an experience, not even an example. Okay. I have an experience. And Nigerian youth who knows where I work, they also know that this young man have an experience. Well, can you let us yes. share with us? Quite that sneaky person now. But for, for <laughs> those who knows within the public domain knows. Yeah. Because okay. you see... What do you, did it have to do with the person you worked with previously? Generally, from different areas. Now, you see... Let, let me give you an instance. You see a youth... You talk to the guy, Alpha, what's going to happen? I hear say something, they happen from Trasco. Are you going to say, no, I don't go. But you'll be surprised while you are there, you suddenly it surfaces. Okay. They said, ah, you, they come, now you know. So, you see, there's a lot of skill issue. There's a lot of disappointment. And they call it scope, 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 scope. <laughs> so, you see <laughs> that you are talking, look, look, let, no, let, let me tell you this. You see, I have always said that Mark Zuckerberg didn't start alone. Okay. Microsoft didn't start alone. There was at a point you have to join together. Okay. Collabo. At a point you have to separate and go on your own. At a point again you come back again. Okay. These are processes. So what stage is it Nigerian youth now? So you see that of, the, the, you, you see even, even for you for youth, you find out that two youth or three youth you start most of the NGOs we have today. I think I deal with over a hundred NGOs while in the office. And I will tell you, when proposals are written, they come like four or five as executives. Okay. As the proposal is getting approval, the numbers streamline to three. Once approval is about to come, it becomes two. Once money is about to come, it becomes mm -hmm. one. Okay. I, you get my analogy. Yeah. So you find out that peop, within the youth, there's a level of skinishness. There's a level of disappointment. Everybody wants to use the other one and mm -hmm. use the other one. They come together when they want to start, but when money is about to come, they scatter. they scatter. So sometimes I get confused. Is it poverty or is it, that's why I say, ethical preparation. Okay. okay. You have to be prepared ethically to know that two of us can come together. Yeah. I had the opportunity to speak to young couples and I said, why wait to look for a job? Why not save 200000 Or maybe if you save, save 10000 
in six months, 60,000, 60,000. All of you come up together. You read this admin, so you be in charge of administration. You read accounting, be in charge of accounting. You read marketing, be in charge of marketing. You that had ICT, be in charge of ICT. Go to CAC, register a company. Five of you will be directors of the company and start something. There is power in unity coming together to form a bond. But I tell you, it's not possible. When it starts, this one is always afraid of this person. The other one is afraid Everyone of this person. Everyone is suspicious of the other. The level of suspicion is high. So ethically, the youth needs to be prepared to know that in such a situation, you have to come together like a cooperative. But you notice when they come together, as the process continues, they what happens? Fine. There is disappointment. I've worked with several NGOs. They always fight and scatter, fight and scatter. Later they meet again. Let's meet and continue. <laughs> and you see, when they meet again, know that the other man who has been disappointed mm -hmm. is coming to hit and hit in a manner <laughs> that back. the thing will scatter <laughs> and completely scatter. Wow, that's not so a good commentary it, at all. You see, you see, that is the situation that we find ourselves. And our youth must need to know whether we have an economy that is buoyant or not. Mm -hmm. You have to learn that spirit of a team spirit for you to be able to succeed. Because you need the right people to work together. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. the youth cannot come together. To do. And that's why you find out that no matter what you push aside, you say not too young, not too young to, to run, run mm -hmm. bill. Some are supporting, some are against. against. The question you ask, why should somebody be against what will favor him? Yeah. Because money has come now. <laughs> so he's telling you that is your word. And it's very sad. So don't you think that as as long as we still have poverty as a factor in Nigeria, I mean, there's no there's no headway for us because from almost all the things you've mentioned, poverty is a very strong factor when people don't have money. You know, they can be easily lured to things. They can easily make decisions. So so long as we keep having poverty in Nigeria, there's no headway. Poverty will ever exist. We have high we level have of poverty. Yeah, poverty will ever exist. Poverty, even if it reduces, but you see, I've seen a family that lives in a room. Father, mother, three children, they grew up. In that same room, you won't hear somebody going to steal. It's healthy. Do we have such ethics in our country to say that, oh, as a son, you want to live the way your father advised you or your mother upbringing? So, ethical preparation is very, very key. But unfortunately, I will say here that somehow, somehow we have missed it and so long. Mm -hmm. And that is why I always describe the case of the Ni Nigeria that is like a thread that has intertwined itself. Trying to lose it from another side. I don't know whether you've seen that kind of thread. Yeah. Maybe you were trying to do something and the thread just tie itself and tie itself. At the end of the day, why you want to pull to your side? It's difficult. To, and later on, it just straight away. Yeah. And I pray we don't get to that level. All right. Finally, uh, before we let you go, uh, what would you, how would you assess the level of volunteerism in the country so far? Has it increased, and have they gotten? Though you told us about a girl that had made headway using that uh, policy of, uh, but in other spheres, how would you describe it? Is it being embraced by other people? Volunteerism is still very, very at the lowest end in Nigeria today. Because again, volunteerism in America, even Obama volunteered. America's policy is that even before you grow to occupy position, you must have volunteered. I saw a young girl who came from America to Nigeria to spend three months and was looking for a place to volunteer. So, volunteerism exists in other spheres. But what pains me is that. One such team leaves the shore of other country, crosses the international airport of Nigeria, stands automatically with abuse. Okay. We have a lot of abuse on most things that come to our side. So we have abuse of volunteers. Now, you are supposed to come out to say you want to volunteer. We are be able to say, oh, sir, I will be coming to the office to help you to do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. or Tuesdays and Thursdays. But don't be surprised, the person sees you as a shitload. Yeah. He abused the process. 
I've also been suffered from it. I told someone, a lady, I will volunteer to work with you. Then suddenly, we went somewhere and said, meet my PA. I nod my head. <laughs> and suddenly, wow. I found out that what I said I would be doing Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursdays became every, every day. day. When she's coming, where are you? Wow. Then one day, she shouted up and said, what? I'm not a star. Mm. And gradually, I have to lose her. So, one, the policy of volunteerism needs to be well defined. Presently, I'm aware I'm, a, I'm also part of the National Steering Committee on Volunteerism okay. Policy in Nigeria today. Okay. And secondly, what do we have in the policy for yeah, now? What, the policy talks about the rights for volunteers, opportunities for volunteers, okay. the conditions for engagement of volunteers, mm -hmm. the the uh, the, the terms for engagement of volunteers, mm -hmm. the organization itself, because for you to accept volunteers, there is a template that needs mm -hmm. to be designed. Okay. Then the legal implications of engaging volunteers and all that. So it's a document that has been going through processes and we believe that very sooner or later we'll have it clear. And once that policy is in place, but right now what is going on is more of advocacy. Okay. And you see a lot of NGOs are now engaging volunteers. And some volunteers are getting skills, they are getting training on a daily basis. And that way, their CVs are being improved. Okay. Because, you see, I, I volunteered first with SSA. I was head of programs. I moved to a special advisor. I was given special assistance. Then I moved to another one, technical assistant. I built my profile. Okay. So while building that profile, I still have somebody within that three years and a half that I did that, who still comes to federal secretaries jumping around. I say, young man, go and volunteer somewhere. <laughs> so today, if I drop my CV and he dropped the CV, you could see the difference. difference yeah. All right, now let's um, take your message to the youth as regards exploring talent, as regards developing skills. You know, tomorrow is youth day. What will be your message to the youth? My message to the Nigerian youth is to explore your talent, accept to volunteer, because organizations may not have the money to pay you, but you can choose to volunteer to give you the access to their facilities. Secondly, to give you access to network, because you need people for you to go to the next level. You need somebody to introduce you. Mm. You need somebody to discover you. So where you go to volunteer and develop your talent, you see different opportunities. You meet opportunity for somebody who will say, oh, this person is talented. I need to invest in this person. So you need people to invest in your talent. And you cannot get it by sitting inside the house. Mm. Again, it's so painful for Nigerian youth. I also advise, I'm a Christian. But we should not over spiritualize a lot of things because some things are practical of course and you have to do it the practical way yes. all right well let's say big thank you to the country director of std project nigeria and the person of luda okonobo thank you for coming and uh, inspiring uh, the nigerian youth to go out there and do something positive in order to develop themselves and the nation in general We'll be going for a quick break. We'll come back. We'll be wrapping up New Day for today. My name is Ibrahim Kudamalbi. My name is Dr. Matthew Ashikeni. I am Dr. Muhammad Adamo Askeran. My name is Kometo Senadiaju. Keep watching. Keep on watching. Keep watching. The program New Day. New Day. New Day on People's Television. People's TV. People's TV.
Chin PT. Alright, I hope you've been having fun. I hope your day has uh, turned memorable with all the exciting discussions and news that uh, we brought your way. Yeah, definitely. One key thing I picked out of today's discussion is the need to volunteer. So this is a message to youth out there. Go out there and do volunteer steps. And uh, you'll be building your CV, you'll be building your profile so that when you go out there and you want to get a job, I mean, your profile is already developed. Yeah, so and uh, it's like you said, it's a sure way of entering places that uh, normally definitely. you might not be able to go in. But the fact that uh, you're going to save the company some money, definitely they will love to so have it in you house. In. <laughs> and so tie that uh, as, as a policy and uh, probably we'll get to see success for it. And as much as we need money, yes, we all do. But then again, sometimes experience, you have to get the experience before the money, money comes. comes. <laughs> yeah, volunteers to watch New Day every day and uh, you'll be sure your day will be really exciting, memorable, you'll be well informed and uh, you'll be watching Africa's finest breakfast show. All right, at this point, we'll be wrapping up the show for today. Thank you for staying with us from 7.30 up until now. We'll see you next week. Do have a great blessed weekend. Make sure you rest very well. I am Enchino Suamali. And I am Anthony Momodi saying good morning. Good morning. <laughs>